Hello and welcome to my channel, Fish of the Flock. My name is Melissa Robinson, but subscribers can call me Missy. Today we've got another sewing mystery. It began on a cold winter night. I was in my office writing up a report from a recent case I'd just managed to crack. Payment from that case was keeping the lights on and dinner on the table. Yes, I was feeling pretty good about my detective skills when I heard a faint rustle of papers. Someone had just slid an envelope under the door and I had a hunch as to who it was. I ran to catch them. There I saw a shadow. A shadow from my past. Oh, so it's you then, eh? Well, you got a lot of nerve showing up here. I swore I'd never work with you again. But there they were, staring up at me with those eyes. Damn it all, but I never could resist those eyes. <sighs> well, what are you waiting for? Come inside before you catch cold. Back in my office, I investigated the envelope and I found a vest in it. Or rather, a vest pattern. This pattern came from a thrift store and I just love the look of it. However, some of these pattern pieces were not cut out with the utmost of care. And I don't know if I even have a complete pattern. There should be two of them actually in here. I don't know if it will fit me. I don't know anything. Hopefully I have all of the pieces in here to make a vest. So without any further pun or preamble, let's get to investigating this pattern. Okay, I lied about the no further pun part. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> All right, so the first step here is going to be taking a look at all the evidence here and seeing if we even have all of the necessary pattern pieces. It does look like I have all of the instructions instructions, which should have all of the pattern pieces listed. So we'll go ahead and do that first. that is. All right, here we go. <laughs> this seven piece, if you look at number seven here, it looks like it's missing the C part of it. So you see it's, there's A, B, and then there should be a C part that is cut out. I don't know, things aren't looking good so far. <laughs> So now we have an idea of what number three is supposed to look like. So it looks like here we have still this bottom piece, which will give us C. Because I'm interested in A, B, and C. So this is giving me a little hope here. Okay, 
Okay, now that these are completely sorted, I can go through and see if I can figure out what size is the best for me. <laughs> I'm not great at reading patterns. I kind of just wing it most of the time. So we're gonna try and we'll see. Time for me to divest myself of this vest and tie probably. So I can get, hmm. Actually, I'm gonna keep the tie on because this bra does flatten me a little bit. So that'll give me just enough space up there, I guess. But my bust is what it is. We'll do my waist. Actually, I should divest myself of my tie and the suspenders for more accurate measuring. 36, let's see. What are, we are back. My memory card was full, but I was able to get some stuff removed and we're back now. So based on the measurements that I took and a quick gander at the pattern, I think I should be making the size 16. Luckily, I think that's actually what this is cut to because they did cut it to the size that they wanted. Usually when I cut my patterns, I just cut it around the whole thing and then I can make adjustments to the side, to the size, sorry, <laughs> as I go. So like I'll pin it to where I want it cut it to and then cut it underneath. It's a little bit bothersome, but I like to leave the pattern intact personally. Um, but you do you, boo, right? So I'm, I'm hoping it'll work. If it wouldn't have worked, then I think I might have just made it anyways and then tried to like scale it up. I don't know how to do that, but it would have been an interesting learning experience. In any case, we're going to get some fabric and we're gonna cut it out. My idea was for this first vest to serve as a kind of mock-up to help familiarize myself with the pattern, and I chose my fabric accordingly. Here I have a thrifted curtain, but I like to make my mock-ups wearable if possible, so I was careful to cut all the stripes in the same direction. I also cut a lining out of some thrifted bed sheets. Today, I have all of my pieces cut out, both the lining and the outer pieces for my vest. We are going to be sewing it together today, but first I need something to help me feel a little more invested in this project. Let's get to sewing. I started by sewing in the darts, which I had marked out in pencil with just three dots. That's how I do it. Then put all the back pieces together, then sewed top pieces to bottom pieces, then attached the front to the back. I have all of my pieces assembled, so now I'm going to try it on and we'll see how it fits. There is way too much space up here but it is nice and sm snug. I almost said smug. I think it's looking cute. Of course, I can only see it in the viewfinder, so. I do feel like I look a little bit like a candy striper. Then I just need to sew the lining together and then this puppy will be done-zo. Let's keep going. You can see here that I did have some scraps of white fabric that I used along with the striped bed sheet that I cut the lining out of. But the lining was exactly the same as the outer layer in both process and pattern. I sewed the lining to the outer layer right sides together, turned it inside out, and then stitched down the edges. At this point, I started making a new vest with four different fabrics. I really need to get me some more memory cards. A lot of this happened off camera, probably because of 
memory card space, honestly. That was a common theme here. <laughs> But I made several poor decisions, including deciding only to partially line this particular vest, which might have been a good idea if the fabric I had chosen was more sturdy, but it's kind of a flimsy cotton fabric. And honestly, it's only on reflecting on this whole process here and now that I realized that this is a learning moment. The fabric choices are important, etc. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new day when i went to bed last night i left myself a hot mess honestly <laughs> i don't want to finish this it is it is not all coming together, but I'm going to finish it anyways. It's supposed to be like a Valentine's Day vest. And then I'm going to stick with the instructions in here because they actually have some pretty good instructions. And when I was reading the instructions, which I hadn't done when I made the first vest, I was like, oh, that makes sense. I will do it that way. What I'm gonna do moving forward for the next vest that I make but I just need to finish I just need to finish this one it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty ugly I think it's not gonna be nice but it'll be done this one this one I think was doomed from the start here we go I think you could probably tell that I was not highly motivated to finish this vest. I liked the pink and the gray, but I didn't have enough of it. It is what it is. I got this vest done. It is not pretty. Not loving that. Um, but I have one more vest I want to make. Here are a few things that happened off camera while I was clearing space on my memory card. First, I traced some pattern pieces and made some small alterations. And then I dug through my fabric stash and pulled out this really cute fabric. It's covered in like little radishes. How adorable is that? This is something that I've been holding on to and not wanting to use. There wasn't enough to make a skirt. There wasn't just, there just wasn't a whole lot of it, but I think that this project would be perfect for it. And then I also got this green fabric. This is the remains of a 100% cotton bed sheet that I am going to use for the lining of this final vest. The idea behind this vest is to make it look kind of folksy, a little hobbit core, so we'll see how that turns out, especially since I altered the pattern to make it work for what I'm trying to make it work for. <laughs> I wanted it to be somewhat like this vest that I was wearing the other day. This is one of my favorite vests. <laughs> Anyways, there are not many hours left in the day, so I need to get to work. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh no, do we have to sit through some more footage of her cutting out fabric pieces? No, no you don't. Because I went ahead and did a poorly executed transition for you. So all you have to watch is me cutting out this thing and then bam, I mean, bam, <laughs> there it is all cut out and I also have to cut out the lining but guess what I didn't film that either there it is already cut out now like I said earlier I did follow the instructions for assembling the vest this time I sewed in my darts and then assembled it so that it looks the way that you see it now and I was really determined for this vest to look nice so I ironed it in everything sewed the lining and outer pieces together and ironed it again and then I think it's called basting when you sew down the edges, but I did that. 
but the bottom hem was still raw, so I ended up making my own bias tape. It wasn't cut on a bias, so it's not truly bias tape, but it functions similarly. And I used that to trim out that bottom raw edge. Assembly would have been a little different if I had used a bottom piece of the pattern, but this is more of what I was going for style-wise. Now buttons were the final step, so get ready for the reveal. Now that we are at the final vestiges of this video, it is time for me to talk about the vests that I made. While I'm doing that, please comment your favorite one below. So the very first one that I made, I feel like turned out pretty nice. I have not yet added buttons because I don't feel like I have any buttons that I would want to use with this fabric. So, I need to find some buttons and add them. The second one is this adorable Valentine's themed one. I made a lot of mistakes in this one. I... <laughs> it's a mess on the inside. The fabric isn't the best. It feels kind of chimsy. chimsy. It feels kind of flimsy. Uh, I think having fully lined it would have helped with that. Um, but the little pockets I think are super cute. I'm happy with those. Overall, I think I would wear it for Valentine's Day for fun and it would probably end up just going in my closet for the rest of the year if I'm completely honest with myself and with you. This one, I actually followed the instructions for assembly which was a good thing. I kind of wish I had made the neckline a little bit wider and a little bit more square, but I don't dislike it. I think it turned out super duper cute. I'm really excited to put together some outfits with this. Um, I like the pop of green that kind of helps to tone everything down a little bit. You have this little green barrier between all of the red and orange and then the red of my skirt. If I wear it with something else, that will be a whole nother story. But I think it turned out super adorable. I still think that I could have, I could get rid of a little bit more space in the shoulder area. Um, the buttonholes are a little bit of a mess. I'm really not good at sewing buttonholes. I don't think that buttonholes are the most noticeable thing when you're out and about wearing the clothing. So unless somebody is like closely inspecting my clothes, I don't know that it would really be something that someone notices. So I'm excited to maybe make some more vests. I am obsessed with vests. I feel like they really help an outfit come together. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked anything about this video, please hit the like button. And if you would like to see more of what 
what I do, please subscribe and then I can see you in the next video. Bye. Bada bing, bada boom. Sorry, I just found a stray thread. Stuff, stuff in my teeth. <laughs>